are using 3D printed materials in this project. PLA for fuselage and TPU for landing legs. Clean the landing legs using a knife cutter. Be careful when you are using knife cutter. Always wear hand protection to avoid unwanted injury. Apply enough glue to the landing legs and attach it to the wing of the rocket bottom fuselage. Attach all the four feet to the remaining wings. This will serve as a protection for our rocket during the rough landing. TPU is a flexible material and therefore it won't break even during the rough landing. After attaching all the landing legs on the bottom fuselage, set aside it first. Going to our motor frame holder. Motor frame holder is 3D printed PLA material. We will use this to hold the motor in proper and precise position. If it is necessary, use a spacer to avoid friction from the motor to the frame during the operation of the motor. Spacer will give enough clearance for the frame to the rotating part of a motor. Attach it to the frame and make sure that your screws can go through the frame holder. Attach together the bottom cover and the frame holder. Use the 502 glue to position it. holes from the frame screws holes to the bottom cover. Insert four M2 male screws from the frame to the cover. Then lock it from the cover with M2 long female screws. You can use 2mm hex screwdriver to tighten the screws and long nose plier for M2 female screws to counterfeit the rotation of the screws. With a 1.5 mm thickness drill bit, I make holes bigger to ensure that screws are free to go through the frame. Use M1.4 screws to mount the motor securely. Use small Phillips screwdrivers to mount the motor from the frame to the rocket. Make sure that the wire is following the middle frame arms. Use small Phillips screw drivers to mount the motor to the frame of the rocket. Do this process for all the motors.
attaching all the motors to the frame make four holes on the bottom cover so that we can have enough space to insert our motor wipes going inside the rocket. Use 3mm drill bit in making holes. Pinch the wires and roll it in one direction so that we can insert it easily. Do this process for the remaining motors. We finish the first part of our making. Now we finish our first part of making in this project which is the fuselage landing gears and also our motor mounting together with the cap cover of our rocket. See you on the next part which we are going to solder some wires already on our flight controller. Making time. In this making, we will be using the soldering iron a lot. Soldering is necessary to connect all the wires of every component to our flight controller. In order to do that, we have to know first how to solder properly and safely. Soldering iron is a tool that is used to connect different parts in an electronic board. Soldering is the process where the solder is melted by applying heat to the parts that are to be joined. After melting, a strong bond is created at the component to allow wetting. Before we solder our flight controller, we should learn first how to solder properly to avoid breaking or burning our flight controller. Note, flight controller is very sensitive, so we must learn how to solder first before we try to solder directly to our flight controller. In this project, I am using the adjustable temperature soldering iron because it is important to have a precise temperature to melt the soldering lid and avoid overheating electronics on our board. Use the soldering practice board to develop your skills in soldering. Use a good soldering wire or lead to achieve your desired soldering outcomes. We will use some wires to connect to the board using our soldering iron. Set the temperature of your soldering iron from 250 degrees to 360 degrees or even higher if needed. Too high and prolonged heating on circuit board may damage some of the electronic components. Tips for soldering. Whenever you solder a wire to a board, apply soldering lead to both wires and soldering pad. This will make soldering easier. In applying soldering lead, don't move the soldering tip so that the conductor or copper will transfer the heat and gently push the soldering lead to the wire or soldering pad. Don't prolong the exposure of the board to heat. Clean a soldering tip always using a steel sponge and soldering paste. Try to practice your soldering skills by making something like this LED light on a circuit board. Soldering is not hard. Just take time to practice and you will become better. Making XT30 Power Cord Last time, we finished the landing legs assembly and the motor mounting to the motor frame. Today, we will be making XT30 power cord. This will be connected to the flight controller and the battery of the rocket. How to make an XT30 power cord? You can base on this wiring diagram for this power cord. In making XT30 power cord, we will be using XT30 male socket, wire, capacitor, and shrinkable tube. The tools that we will be using are soldering iron, wire stripper, long nose plier, and a scissor. We will be using as well soldering wire or soldering lid. Let's start by stripping the insulator on the two wires. Expose enough wire copper to apply the soldering lid. Apply soldering lead to the wire conductor. 
This will make our soldering joint easier later. Apply soldering lead to the XT30 male socket. Apply also soldering lead to the capacitor. Attach together the wire and the XT30 socket by soldering both. After that, solder the capacitor to the XT30 socket making sure that the negative and the positive of the capacitor are on the right position. After attaching it, apply more soldering lead to the joint of the capacitor to make it strong. We now successfully attach the wire and capacitor on the XT30 socket. The next step that we need to do is to cover the joint and the capacitor with the shrinkable tube. Gently insert the shrinkable tube on the socket, covering the capacitor and the soldering joints. Then shrink the tube using lighter or a torch. Finally, our XT30 power cord is finished. What we are going to do next is to solder this power cord to the flight controller. This will be the power source connector to this flight controller. It will be connected to the battery with XT30 female socket. Strip small insulator to the wire, exposing the conductor. Pinch the wire to make it together. Apply enough soldering lead to each wire. After this, we go now to the flight controller. The power input to this flight controller is beside the USB port. You will see the negative and the positive at the bottom, or VCC and GND on the top. This is the negative and this is the positive. Apply soldering on each input. Be careful in applying soldering lead because this flight controller board is very sensitive. Before we solder the wire, make sure that you insert first the wire to the flight controller cover. Insert the wire on the middle hole. Solder now the wire to the flight controller power input pad. Make sure that no excess of soldering lead falls to some part of the flight controller for it may cause short circuits burning your flight controller. Gently solder the wire to the power input pad. Now we successfully finished the power cord to the flight controller. The next thing we need to do is to solder all the necessary thing like motor to our flight controller.